Hi. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Is anybody there? There are. Hi, everybody. It's been a while, hasn't it? Feels like a while. It's eight o'clock here on a blustery and cold London evening. Everything's finally in full bloom. The oak tree, which this, which I'm sort of sat under the shade of, um, is finally in full leaf. So, how have you been? Feels like ages, right? Is it? Is it two weeks? Is it three weeks? Um, I will. I. I don't know whether the week on week off thing is working for me. I've maybe like two weeks on a week off. We'll just play whatever. How are you all doing? How are you doing, my brothers and sisters? I caught your drumstick during there, there. Well done. I hope I didn't get you. I'm always worried. I used to worry that I might hit somebody in the eye with a drumstick. And if it was in North America, maybe get sued. Okay. Um, well, I haven't been posting much, as some of you might have noticed. And I just wanted to explain a bit, partly because I haven't had anything to say. And if you've got nothing to say, there's no need to say anything. Um, but the other thing is, um, I was I just been so upset, like so many of us, about what's been going on in Gaza, Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Israel. And sometimes, to show a pedal or a group of pedals or an image on social media just didn't seem right to me, and I just, you know. Um, so that's why I posted something on Sunday about what's been going on. And, um, you know, I got some supportive words, but also I got a lot of, there was a, there was a lot of beef. And I think partly because social media is not, is not great at, well, it's, it's actually crap at presenting such horrific situations and also it's very easy to twist the words so I wanted to just um just give some clarity on that because it's just been on my mind a bit um and I just wanted to read out a couple of things and they are from a couple of posts from Mira Awad now Mira is somebody I know she is an Arab Israeli musician artist and I met her in 2017 when Radiohead played in Tel Aviv. Um, me and my family connected with David Broza, who some of you might have seen, um, who, who I chatted to. And David's become a really, really important friend to me. He's, he's somebody who I look up to. He's, a, he's part of the, he's a peace activist, as, as, as he was explaining, and He's one of the people in that region that is trying to bridge these two camps, the, 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 the Israeli Jewish side and the Arab and Palestinian side. And he, he has worked with, he works with a lot of Palestinian musicians. Um, there's a fantastic documentary, and I, maybe I'll add it in the bio, that was on Netflix called East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem. And it's a documentary, and he made an album with Steve Earle producing, and he brought in Mira um, Muhammad, who's a Palestinian rapper, the Jerusalem Youth Choir, and basically made this album in, in Sabrine Studios, which is in East Jerusalem, which is a Palestinian area, but it's occupied by is Israel, has been since 67, 67 war. And it's a very, very, very moving and piece of work and him and so I connected me and my family Susan me and the kids went over and we connected with David and had an incredible evening in East Jerusalem with all these musicians and then the next day we hooked up with Mohammed and went to the Shalfat uh, refugee camp which is is the only refugee camp for Palestinians within East Jerusalem and we also later on in our trip hooked up with Mira and Mira is another one of these lights in the region um, trying to bring people together. So I thought 
um, I just read a couple of posts because I definitely, she's so eloquent, she knows the situation and feels it and lives it every day so much more than I, I will ever know or any of us unless we live there know. But her words resonated strongly. So the first post she, she wrote came out on Sunday and I'm going to read it out. If I stand in solidarity with the residents of Sheikh Jarrah and against their displacement, it does not mean that I am pro-lynching Jewish people. If I stand in solidarity with Israeli citizens in the south of Israel, it does not mean that I am pro the actions of the IDF in Gaza. This simplistic discourse that aims to flatten reality into good and evil like in some John Wayne cowboy movie is an insult to human intelligence. When you are in solidarity, you agree to be in some sort of vulnerability because you are not always in control of everyone's actions in that camp. But what kind of human are you if you cannot see the pain of others? No matter how horrible reality is, we should never generalise and condemn whole sectors because of the vandals amongst them. We should not delegitimise the pain of people. If we don't see their pain, how can we expect them to see ours? I stand in solidarity with everyone getting hurt in this conflict and I don't care if it does not sit well with someone. Okay, that's what she coped, posted on Sunday and this is what she posted today. And this too echoes. This is. She writes, People are searching for symmetry in an utterly asymmetrical reality. I grieve the loss of human life on both sides of the fence. I worry for the children and for our future in this region. I cry every time I encounter hate and incitement on both sides. However, when I go to sleep at night in Tel Aviv, the skies above me are guarded by one of the most sophisticated defence systems in the world, Iron Dome. Israel prides itself with having the strongest army in the region, while Gaza is a locked prison that Israel holds the keys to. Nothing symmetrical in that. Israeli celebrities are flooding the media, claiming Israel has a right to defend itself. Well, how about the right of Palestinians to retaliate against ongoing injustices and an impossible reality? Violence does not just erupt, it boils up for a long time till it does, and the routine of retaliating to retaliations has brought us this far. I am never for violence. To me, there is always a better option of resistance. I've been called naive for my belief and even a traitor. I hope you do not take my words out of their context and claim I am justifying one side's violence over the other. I condemn both, but I also cannot join in on the symmetry claim. There is no symmetry here. So, I think she says it all. And I have so much respect for people, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the souls like Mira, Muhammad, David, these people who stand in the middle, because that's the hardest place to be. The easiest place is to be in each camp, is to sling arrows at the other. And this is, you know, the violence by Israel is disproportionate, but there is there are rockets going the other way. And, you know, and what's happened to the Palestinians for, for years now, for over 50 years, is disgraceful on the occupied territories. But this is complex, and and anyway, I'm I'm not as eloquent as Mira is. So, right, all right. <laughs> um, I'm going to draw one of you in because, um, yeah, because that makes sense right now. Okay, who is going to come in and join? Requests. All right. Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to do the old. Okay. All right. I like this. How about this? This person. Let's talk pedals. How do you want to join? Uh, you can join by asking request to join. 
Hi. Hello. Who's this? Hello. Hi. Hi, who's this? Hey, Brian. <laughs> it's Ed. <laughs> Any joy? No. Okay. Let's bring someone else in. I don't think it's working for you, my friend. Do you want to just exit? All right. Let's bring someone else in. All righty. Let's. Okay. How about Abel? I like that. Braille stars. Hello? Braille stars? Maybell? That was... This, maybe this is going to be one of those nights. How are you? Laughing emojis. <laughs> okay. All right. You're playing hard to get tonight, guys. I know. Okay, playing really hard to get. All righty. How about... Okay, Mariam's somebody I haven't spoken to, but I've seen her, so I'm going to call her in. I've seen her a lot on the, on the chat. Mariam. Hi. Hi. Bienvenue en France. <laughs> Ça va Ça va et toi Merci. Ça va. Ça va bien. Super. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Glad to finally, see you. Finally, we get, to, we get to speak. I've seen you on the message board a lot and I've, you know, answered and I thank you for all your lovely words of support and the, the invitations to come and, to, come, to come and play, right? Yeah, but thank you, first of all, for you, what you do with us, because, uh, sorry, my English is not really good. <laughs> and I'm it's speaking great. like a French girl. <laughs> but thank you for your words, your peaceful words. You know, I, I have Tunisian origins, and my father uh, always told us that Israel was an enemy. And I, can, can, I couldn't be agree with him, because I think that it's complicated over yeah. there. So... You, what you read uh, just at the beginning of this chat is, was just, uh, it, it, it was just wonderful, gorgeous, and thank you for that. So I can, I can blame you. I, I, I've seen the messages, the terrible messages, and it was, I was sad for you, really, because you are a peaceful man, and thank you for too, because well. you are the only thing to, to, to speak with us. Yeah, but it's, I think it, I felt, Mariam, I felt it's important because like you said, there are a lot of people, you know, in this world that we live in, we have these sides that people are taking and you've got the, you've got the death to Israel side and you've got the other side, which is Palestinians are all, and they're all terrorists, you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, my experience, and I went there, but it's everywhere you go, everywhere you go. I would say, I, I, every, everywhere I go, I meet people around the world who want to live side by side in respect. Yeah. Of course, there are some idiots out there. There are people on the extremes. And they, they make all the noise. But yeah. most people want to respect uh, at one another and live side by side and get on. And, and for me, that's, you know, I'm just, sorry, I'm turning the light on. It's got dark. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that for me is, so I think it's, I think it's, I, mean, I think it's interesting because I think when you don't, you know, and I think this is something that's happening a lot in our world. If I speak too quickly, ask me to slow down. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. I, I understand you, you, you speak quite well because I, 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 I've met many English people. I, when I was a guy in a museum, uh, there was a, a teacher, an English teacher who chose me for my, uh, Manchester pupils. 
and the accent <laughs> was so strong. <laughs> Sometimes uh, they had to repeat because I didn't <laughs> understand them. So you speak very well. Oh, well, thank you. That, 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 that's because I come from Oxford, Oxford English, oh. right? <laughs> so nice. <laughs> um, I don't fortunately, but... Uh, Oops. but <laughs> Manchester, I went to university in Manchester and I love the Mancunian accent and I, I actually love regional accents. I love all of them around Britain. Because we're, I mean, you have the same in France, right? There's, when you go yes. down south, that, yeah. that, that patine, everything is aying and, isn't it? In northern France, it's worse, <laughs> you know? Really? Your, your author's name is Una. Yeah. In 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 my territory, <laughs> with people from here, uh, they they pronounced uh, you know name with the a at the, at the end, with a, a sound like o, oh, you know, una yeah. made here uno. <laughs> so it's uno. Really okay. <laughs> uno. It's really ugly, <laughs> but people here are really kind. Really, really, you know, Aras, you you've yeah. been in. Uh -huh. Many times I saw you in Arras two times with my mother and my ex companion, and we uh, we enjoyed your your concerts. This was really nice. It's be, we were there in twenty. Was it twenty sixteen? Yeah, twenty seventeen. And we yeah. played in we played in the square in Arras, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, in twenty o eight. Yeah, it's be, Oh yeah, twenty o eight. Yeah, when In Rainbow was released, you, you play in Arras, and I remember that this concert was extraordinary. In the main square, it was so beautiful, because it's a beautiful square, indeed. That was, a, it's funny, because I don't know why I was thinking about the tours, and I was thinking about that, that In Rainbow's tour. And it was, I think it was the first time we toured, when yeah. we weren't, when we, we, we had the confidence to just play always before when we played to big places we were we there was a lot of adrenaline and we were kind yeah. of scared not scared but there was a lot of fear and it was very tense but in rainbows we learned to relax yeah and it, and it was suddenly like you know and i think tom as a performer as well he kind of that that album there's a lot of love and warmth in it and i think it came out in in him as a person but i think with the whole band it was just it was very loose it was very you know it's about it's about love and light and color and yeah. warmth yeah. so yeah you know so the, it, the, was that a, was... it was a really beautiful album i remember you played i think uh, all the songs of the album and i said wow they play everything what's it's really nice even though i love other albums like okay computer <laughs> Amnesiac, Amnesiac, or Hell to the Thief. I yeah. saw you in 2003 in Paris Bercy. And oh, it yeah. was the best concert I've ever seen in my life. I, I've, I've seen Franz Ferdinand, MGMT, Arcade yeah. Fire. I love yeah. Arcade Fire, really. yeah. But your concert in Paris Bercy was just a piece of heart. And oh. I, I, Oh, sorry. And I remember when we go out uh, to, 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 to take the, 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 the tubes, you know, to go home, yeah. um, people had stars in the eyes. And, wow. and me, yeah, really, really. And we, were, we feel so happy. So thank you so I, much. Thank, well, thank you. And I remember that Bercy, that we did two shows at Bercy. And yes. I, don't know, I don't know if you remember, we had a band opening up for us called Asian Dub Foundation. Yeah. And Asian, and Asian Dub Foundation were popular in France as well. Yeah, and I remember like the response, like they basically, it's like, a, like they, they got the whole room going. So when we, got, when we got on stage, the place was so hot, it was electric. And I remember the energy of it. And we were just, you know, there was a lot of intensity in Hail to the Thief, isn't there? There's some, there's some you know, like Sail to the Moon, there are some trippy moments, but... There's yeah. a lot of two plus two equals five. And, and, and so it's kind of, uh, you know, sit down, stand up, all of that. It was quite intense. Um, it was engaged. For me, it was an engaged album. Really, yeah. Hail to the Thief for me was uh, the president of the United States. I, I, I yeah. understand like that, you know, because of the war in Iraq. 
you you evoke Jerusalem, but yeah. in Iraq it's just a disaster for me. Well, it know, was a disaster. Yeah, and it was. And you know what? We named we named the album "Hail to the Thief" because of George Bush, because yeah. he stole the election, and that's what the crowds. But we at the time we didn't admit it um, because there were some people who were worried that it would be taken the wrong way. But we were really angry. We were very, yeah. very angry about what had happened in America and the election in 2001, and also the Iraq war. And, um, yeah. you know, and, and, I, and that album was definitely fueled by, by the intensity of those times and, and what the, you know, what the fuck were, were the West doing invading Iraq, except, you know, they weren't deposing a terrorist as they claimed. They were, yeah. they were in there for the oil, for the money, for the, for the you know, regional, regional power. So, you know, it was, yeah, I mean, it's, it was, uh, yeah. We always, it's funny about Hail to the Thief because the feeling within the band is that it's too long, the album's too long. And what we did do, it was, it was the only album, like when we, when we get towards, when we got towards the end of an album, yeah. we'd always have the biggest fight. <laughs> Indeed. So, so when Kid A, when we were, when we were, when we did Kid A, when we were track listing Kid A, and this was before, so we had all the songs, we had Kid A, and we also, we'd recorded a load for Amnesiac, but we wanted to do two different records. And we hadn't worked out what was going on with Kid A. And I remember we had, we had a, a meeting about track listing Kid A and it got so angry that we all had to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and we nearly split up that day. We were like, because recording Kid A had been a, such a long process. So we were like at the end of our, and, and we couldn't, you know, there was this fight. And we all, we said, well, we have to come back tomorrow. And so when it came to Hail to the Thief, we wanted to, we, we didn't want to go through that emotional, because it's very emotional, right? When you fight yeah. when, in yeah. a band or any time, it's very emotional, right? In, in particular, especially the song um, that uh, Tom dedicated to his son. Uh, oh, no, I lose yeah. my memory. Um, yeah, go to sleep. Oh. No, no, go to sleep in uh, in Hades of the Thief. Um, oh my God, uh, he said uh, maybe you be president, but no, right from yeah. wrong. Um, Hades yeah, of the yeah. Thief, moon. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm yeah, so completely intimidated. But uh, this song is for me it's so strong, and some some of your words in Hades of the Thief was really strong. But yeah. there is a, a song that do a door it's where i end and you begin i ah, yeah. do it because i'm dancing on this song it's really extraordinary <laughs> that nice song and i i do adore this song oh that's great really. <laughs> well i think what we always felt like we we felt the album should have been like maybe three songs less because what mm. we didn't what we've always done on records before is that we edit it and you go like you can't have any songs that aren't great so i mean i think the one i think the song that none of us really like very much i might be wrong not i might be wrong we like that is is um uh we suck young blood ah uh, yeah, That's, yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's a I'm little wrong. yeah it, 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 it's 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 interesting but it's not like um it's it's not it's yeah it's not as good as they're there you know it's not on that level let's put it yeah. that way anyway yeah. so yeah but i wonder uh, what what's what's the process because what's really extraordinary for radiohead is your ability to do uh, a different album each time mm. but an excellent album <laughs> because i remember when key day was released in france and in belgium because we live near belgium here um the critics told that wrote, um, "You will adore this album, or you will hate, hate it." This album. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I adored OK Computer. That's, I think that's my favorite album. But when I listened to Kid A, 
I do adore. And then Radiohead for me was the best band in the world, really. And it's still nowadays. But this critic was so extraordinary, you know. You will adore or will, you will hate. So it's, yeah. well, it was strong. I, I think it's interesting because I think what Kid A did was that, you know, so when we made an OK Computer, we had, we were getting a really big, like lots of people were getting, and I remember about the time we, it was felt like 1997, 98, it was like we were going to become the new U2. That was what it felt like, you know, and that's what people wanted us to do because U2 had done this kind of, they'd been the biggest band of the world and they'd done it. They'd been, they'd been, a, they'd been a great biggest band in the world. You know, Aktung Baby was a great album. You know, they'd done it well, but that was never part of the plan. And yeah. I think when we always knew we were going to make different records, uh, because we kind of, and I remember when we turned up for Kid A, it was, it was Tom who, he, it was like, he had been listening to a lot of Aphex Twin and Boards of Canada and Square Pusher. And he was, he was pushing in that direction. And I think, you know, I, I know what I was listening to at the time. I was listening to a lot of Scott Walker and I thought we could make this amazing record that had strings and, you know, and, beautifully played instruments and maybe more acoustic instruments and it wasn't like that because you know tom's writing the songs but i think i think the impulse i think that impulse to keep moving is first of all it's it starts with boredom yeah. i think that when you've you know when you made a record and then you've played it live for a year a year and a half you you've done that you've yeah. you know that's it you do, why would you want to carry on doing that and I think, um, you know, that the, 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 one of the one of the things that we all have, you know, for instance, today I'm in my room. I'm trying to find new sounds. I'm trying to find sounds that I've never made before. Or, and and so there's that. So you, we're trying to find sounds that you that that you that are new to you, but you're also trying to find sounds that inspire you. You yeah. know, because you yeah. can make anybody can make a different sound and it can be, you know, it can sound very different. But it's whether it works with the music and whether there's emotional content. So that's the thing. That's 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 the that's the knack of it is to is to find try and find something new, but still retain that emotional quality and that connection. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're... so so I think that's what I think that's what we've done, and I think one of the reasons why we haven't made a lot of records in the last ten years is because, you know, partly because people are experimenting and going off and doing their own thing, you know, but also because um, it's a serious commitment. You know, making a record, making a Radiohead album is it takes a long time because a lot of time it's. Um, a lot of time it's trying to, it's exploring and, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and that can be at times that has been quite frustrating. You know, it gets quite hard because if you, if you don't feel like you've done anything good for like six weeks and you've been working for six weeks, it can be, it can be very, it can be very, um, it can be hard. It's, it can be quite depressing. So anyway, I mean, you know, I think I, I, I always feel like, Radiohead is more in the tradition of like I remember around Kid A that the kind of the artists that we suddenly realized so you know on the first three albums we're really influenced by R.E.M. R.E.M. were a really big band for us nice you know, and you know and they were a proper band the guitars and everything and so we were in and then I think by the time we got to Kid A it's like well we've kind of done this and then and then you your role models our role model became I mean for, you know Bowie David Bowie the way that he yeah reinvented himself and then that was like okay yeah each record has to be different and what's brilliant about that is the people who stay with you know that and they understand that whereas when we went from okay computer to kid a we lost a lot of people like the critics said a lot of people go like where's you know where's 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 you know where's lucky where's no surprises you know what's this and and you know, that's just, that's the way it goes. You, you can't make music to please people. 
you you I hope you you hope you connect with people, but you have to make music that you are uh, learning from, that you're exploring, and that you're out of your comfort zone. You're on the edge. You're kind of like I'm not sure whether this is any good or not, and I don't feel very very secure in this place. But that's the right place to be. Yeah, but you you took some risks, risks, and you 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 were right because uh, today is an excellent album for me. Thank you. But Thank my mom less. <laughs> my mom adore adore Radiohead because she loved Creep. Creep uh, is wow, cool. wow, so nice. I was with with her a few days ago, and uh, she listened to Creep on the radio, and she told me stop, stop. I will listen. <laughs> did, like you, the Bible. <laughs> did your mum? So when when Creep came out in 1993, she so makes Creep, me discover Radiohead. I listened really? to at this time Depeche Mode, Nirvana, U2. I adored U2 at this time, and yeah. she makes me listening to uh, Creep. And I told her, yes, that's quite nice, but yeah. it sounds like U2. <laughs> that's, that's, oh really? That's and I prefer you two at this time, but after um, that, that situation changes because pop was released and I was so disappointed by the album pop. And then there was OK Computer. And yeah. my, my, it's, a, it's a heart stroke with, with airbag in the beginning of the album, just excellent. And uh, you, you evoke you two, um, I, I, what, what I love, you, my favorite album of you two are the first ones, the yeah. really first. One. My favorite song is Eleven O'Clock TikTok. Oh, that's I love my TikTok. <laughs> this, that's my favorite because the sounds of the guitar. I know I that agree. the, so the age, I saw the, yeah, I saw them live. Sorry to interrupt. You. I the best gig I ever went to in my whole life. I've been to many. In nineteen eighty-five, yeah. I went to see you two live on the Unforgettable Fire tour. Yeah. And The Unforgettable yeah. Fire is my favorite album. I love that oh. record. By, by my favorite U2 album. And they opened the show with 11 o'clock TikTok. The first song they played. I was I yeah. That was amazing. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, they, 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 were, uh, they were such an important band. You know, it's, what's interesting as well, I'll tell you just about U2 um, a second. So my surname is O'Brien. Which is yeah. an Irish. Which are. is an Irish. You know that's an Irish surname, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And your, so, your eyes. You you have Irish blue eyes. Yeah. Because Bono <laughs> has blue blue eyes. He, he puts he he carries some glasses because he protects his his eyes. But I think you have the same about the same colors. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I I think I've got stigma as well, which is anyway that's by the by. Um. So. So growing up in England in the in the 70s, as I was born in 68, so, you know, I'm a kid, I remember the 70s. And there's real anti-Irish sentiment everywhere. You know, there were lots of jokes about the Irish. Um, you know, the Irish were, because of what was going on in Ireland with the IRA and, you know, terrorism, the North, the South thing, what was, you know, it's very familiar true. story. It's like, Jer it's like Jerusalem, actually, what happens yeah. in North Island. It so was... we, never, we never thought there was going to be peace there. We never, I never thought there'd be peace, you know. And we used to go and see the family, my family in Southern Ireland, and it was beautiful. And, and I get back to Oxford, and I was the only one I knew with an Irish surname. Everyone else was kind of, was English. And there was a real anti-Irish sentiment. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend of mine who used to cut my hair. And he said he came from Ireland to Oxford in the early 80s. And, and he came from a, he, and, and it's a hard, if you were Irish and you came to England, you got, yeah. I mean, I was, beat, I was beaten up at school for, at the, uh, in about 1981, because the whole IRA thing and having an Irish surname. And I asked him, I said, because obviously Ireland by the end of the end of the 80s is like, it's different. The perception of Ireland now is so different. Yeah. And I said, I said to him, I said, what do you think changed it? Because I knew what I thought changed it. And he's not a fan of the band, but he said, you too changed it. 
You two did, made a massive contribution to changing the perception of the Irish. And I remember, go, I remember going, to, going to that U2 gig in 1985, and I got a spine tingle now thinking of it, and they've got the Irish flag flying. And this is in England. And I'm like, yeah. fuck, fuck. They were so important. They brought this, they brought this again. They brought this sense of this Irishness, but they weren't, they didn't fall into that binary thing of coming from the south of Ireland, like pro IRA, fuck the Protestants, fuck Britain. They were all That's about right. peace. And Bono had that white flag, the, the flag of peace. So That's I right. think it's, it's really important. This, this is why people like I was talking earlier about David Broza, Mira Awad. These are the musicians who are doing similarly to what you two and a lot of, a lot of the other musicians in Ireland were, were doing at the time and a lot of the people. So yeah. it was, they, were, they were a massively, massively important band. And for me, you know, like them and the Smiths, uh, yeah. were like my two were my two favorite and and when the unforgettable fire sorry i'm i know i'm talking a lot but when the unforgettable fire came out because that was very different to like war wasn't it so war is new year's day and you know yeah. two hearts I, beat as one and seconds and it's very kind of like it's very loud and then the first track of the unforgettable fire is a sort of homecoming and it's like i remember hearing it going like what is this this is yeah. like it's like it's like um it's like an abstract painting it's like you know it's like a monet or a manet but it's like a, a, an irish moor an irish mount, mountain in shrouded in mist that's right and and so yeah it was they're, they're amazing amazing bands and amazing and you know what they were really when we when okay computer came out we did we did this uh free tibet show in 1997 and a lot, of, a lot of bands, and you too were there. And um, they asked us, uh, we'd never met them, and they asked us whether, whether we'd like to go to their gig in Philadelphia in two nights' time. And we had the night off, we were on tour in America. And so, so we went, and we were treated like kings, you know? And, and they said, would you like to, because they were staying in New York, they said, would you like to travel back with the band after the gig, ride on the bus with them back to New York? And we were like, yeah. And they were so, they were, you know what, they were, they were so generous and so engaged and they were, you know, I just thought, that, I just thought they were amazing that, you know, like REM, like when we toured with REM, so generous in spirit and not kind of like, well, we're better than you or they didn't feel threatened by OK Computer. They were just like, bring it on. We love what you're doing. We, you know, and I, I, I think with them and REM, we definitely, I mean, our music's different, but we shared, you know, we looked towards those two bands as sort of, you know, role models for how bands and how they can work with tight knit, you know, with the, with the, you know, the, the makeup of them. So, um, yeah, it was, it's, it's good to talk about that, actually, because it's interesting about, you know, where we are in, in the Middle East. I mean, there has to be a peace settlement sometime. And, you know, back in the 70s, we thought there would never be peace in Northern Ireland. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think you, you are inspired by the age when you play yeah. guitar. Because yeah. for me, <laughs> when you play guitar, it's not it's just, not, it's not just a, a sound of a guitar. It is a, a sort of a spirit, you know. I, I feel an emotion. That's the reason why I love 11 o'clock TikTok. I love Ankat Dub. Uh, and I don't know if I pronounce it so well because it's a Gaelic, uh, it's a Gaelic yeah. word. Ankat Dub and Into the Heart uh, in Boy album, uh, uh, New Year's Day. The, the, the guitar, the sound of the guitar creates an emotion. And that's yeah. the reason why I love that song so much. Actually, Again, because I've heard it and heard it and heard it. My, my mother liked a lot of YouTube, but I always repeat it. The same, I always listen to the same songs all the time, and she was fed up with that. But I love this song for eternity, yeah. I think. Because well, I think I really the, two, the, the two guitarists for me who had the biggest influence, and one of them is my... He's my, my brother and I love him. He's one of the most beautiful human beings I know. It's Johnny Marr, the Smiths. Yeah. Johnny, and it's Johnny, Ma, and The Edge, really. And they were kind of the two guys. And there were people like um, 
Andy Summers from The Police was the first time I heard a guitar played in a way that I was just like, oh, I want to play the guitar. Yeah. And then, and then there, was, there was Will Sargent from Echo and the Bunnymen and Peter Buck from R.E.M. But really Johnny and The Edge were what they were doing. Like Johnny's playing, I mean, I, I agree with you totally. Like the emotion of, of both those guys in their playing is incredible. Um, yeah. You know, people are saying, obviously, Neil Young and Jerry Garcia, but I didn't hear any Neil Young in the 1980s. No one, you know, we didn't have acts. You know, the hippies were listening to Neil Young. I was into, like, new wave music. And John McGeoch, who was in Magazine and Susie and the Banshees, and um, I was into new wave stuff. I didn't listen to, I'd, I didn't hear Led Zeppelin until I was 27. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, you're right. I think with those guys, there was a lot of emotion in the guitars and in their playing. And they were trying to play in a way with sound. Uh, the Edge especially. Johnny's very much, he's a different kind of player. There are similarities, but he's very much, he has this incredible flow about him. Like you give him an acoustic guitar and you play with him and he just, he just flows. And I think The Edge is more, is more about the sound and the effect he's, you know, of, of what he's trying, he's, he's, he's like a painter coming up with these sort of soundscapes, aren't they? They make you feel. Um, I, love yeah, that they... image. I love that image of a painter because I'm working for museums. So I love that image. It's a beautiful image. I think if, if, we, if, if, he, if, he, if he listened to us, he, he would be really happy because it's beautiful words. You, you told about him. Well, I mean, they're, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky because, uh, you know, Johnny's a really, gr Johnny's an, he's like my older brother. And he really is. He's like, we met first of all, 20, just over 20 years ago, I met him and his wife, Angie, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, and he, well, when we played with Neil Finn and um, he's an amazing, I think it's interesting. I really believe this. It's like, you know, I've met a lot of musicians, a lot of people along the way, as I'm sure. And for me, my favorite musicians have always been incredibly beautiful human beings. Yeah. Um, and really lovely people. And it's always the ones, <laughs> it's always the ones who are like, who aren't that great, who think they're great. And they're not the, they're not at the, they're not at that top level. They're sort of middle. And they're the ones who are the, they're the ones who are very kind of challenging, shall we say. Yeah. You know? And you will work with uh, Johnny Ma, for instance? I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to. I, I spoke to, I'm going to try and get him on. I, I've asked him if he'd come and join us uh, on this, and he's going to. Um, and I said to him, actually, because we played together, we played together, um, obviously, we... 20 years ago in New Zealand and then we did this we went back to New Zealand uh, about 12 years ago we made this record Neil Finn brought us and made this record and and I I sort of co-wrote this song with Johnny and we we did it's a song um called Learn to Crawl and um it was amazing because I had this kind of musical arpeggio thing worked guitar thing worked out and I I, I went to him and I said because the idea was that everybody would write a song. Everybody can contributes a song. And I, I turned up in New Zealand without a song. I just yeah. got this kind of, I just got these notes, this riff and stuff. And I was like, I was like, oh shit, I haven't got a song. You know, what am I going to do? Um, and so I went to Johnny and I said, Johnny, I've got these bits here and I really like them. And he said, oh, why, if you put that there, that there, and that there, and, it's, and he arranged it, and we arranged it. And then he played along and it was like, it's like my favorite things it's like when guitars weave in and out like like when johnny and i play on um johnny greenwood's on let down yeah you know the way the guitars weave in i love that thing when that when it sounds like it just sounds like a a, a nest or something and they're interweaving or you know so it, it, it's he's such a great guy to play with so yeah i'd love to play with him again love to. i would love I would like so much too, <laughs> because so, you you love you love him so much. That's incredible. A so yeah. great friendship. It's just amazing. 
especially yeah. in music world, because I think there is much competition. You you evoke one time the competition between Oasis and Blur. I chose Blur. I, I chose Blur at this time. I adore Damon Albarn. And uh, there, you evoke that competition at the end of the 90s. There were many, many bands and yeah. many, many so a friendship like Radiohead friendship and Johnny Ma and you is just an amazing thing for me. Well, I think, really yeah, and I think as you get older, as you get older, those, those, um, those, I mean, it's just, it's, they're usually arguments of young people, aren't they? Just a moment. I would, it's night, it's evening. <laughs> yeah, it's evening. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how's your day been, Marianne? Sorry? How was your day? How was your day? I don't understand. Okay, uh, en français, uh, 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 yeah. la jour pour toi, c'est bon? Ça va? Ça va. Super. Ça va? Nice. Super. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Super. It's just evening, so I can, I can stay in the, in the shadow, <laughs> even yeah. though I love it. I love that word because there are many, many, so many beautiful words in the uh, English language. There are many beautiful words in French language, but yeah. in, in England, in English, there are, it's a language that I love to speak, but I don't speak every day to English speak, <laughs> speaking people. So it's complicated, actually. You've done brilliantly. You've done absolutely amazingly. Amazing. Paul can Paul, can, I, I, I thought to Paul that he was an amazing French accent, but I think I have an amazing French accent too. <laughs> <laughs> but I love accents. I love the way you speak French with your British accent. That's beautiful. So do I, do, does it sound very English to you when I speak French? Because I'm trying to speak, I'm trying to, I'm trying, okay. En français, uh, Je dois parler uh, avec uh, un accent français. C'est anglais, oui? C'est pas mal. C'est pas, pas mal. C'est pas mal. Oh, D'accord. C'est pas mal. Uh, you, you pronounce quite well the, the I, 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 I. In English, I. In French, R. 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 Marianne. 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 Mary, Mary, in for the Muslims, for the Muslims it's Maryam, Maryam, or for the Jewish people, Maryam or Miriam. Miriam, yes, of course. Marian, Mary, absolutely amazing. Maryam, <laughs> like Mary loves in French, Maryam. And in, is it in uh, in Italian? It's Marianne or Ma no? Maria, Maria Ma in Italian. Maria, okay, of course. Maria, Maria. it's Mary. Mary. <laughs> of course. But Maryam, my name is Maryam, and that's nice. <laughs> that's it's beautiful. Complicated. My mother is French with German and Flemish origins, and my father is Tunisian. To choose a name that correspond to uh, two cultures, it's complicated, really yeah. complicated. Yeah. At the beginning, my mother chose Ines, but she met someone who uh, gave that name to his dog. And so I can't give <laughs> that name for my dog. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> and so she decided to choose the name of my Tunisian grandmother, Maria. And did, yeah. you, did, did, you, did you go over to Tunisia a lot? Do you go over to Tunisia to see your family? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not not uh, in, how to say, um, it's been 20 years I, I don't go in Tunisia because my, my parents were divorced, divorced at the end of the 19th and the divorce was really a nightmare, really a nightmare. So I went the last time at the end of the 90s and then I, I, I didn't wait. I didn't go back in, uh, in that country, but I would like to, to go back to see my family, really, and it, because it's a beautiful country. How, really old beautiful. You, how, how old were you when your parents divorced? Uh, I was uh, 17. I was Hard, 17. Right? It, was, it was necessary. Ma'am, I won't tell you my story, but no. my father was violent, a violent uh, man really violent with us and my brother and I we suffered from a lot 
because of that. So for me, it was a good thing. It was a really yeah. good thing. At the time, I was was really unhappy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I. Gosh. Wow. That's, well done. That's. <laughs> that's well yeah. Well done. I become an adult quite, quite, quite quickly, really quickly, but. That's a nice thing because I learned so many things in my childhood, you know, not to, to be insulted by a man, not to be uh, fight by a man. That's important. I think that um, uh, it, every girl in this world should learn that she had to be respected. She, she, she had to be ex respected by men and especially by a, a husband, a boyfriend. I think it's really important. That's the message I give to small small girls, you know, uh, when they are so insulted. It, yeah, I mean, it's 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 so important, and it's so important. It's funny. I grew up in a I grew up in a family of so on my mother's side, all the women going back four generations were all doctors. They all worked, so there was never any. I didn't grow up. I don't understand that environment whereby. You know, you have the father who's the figurehead of the family and the mother, you know, that just wasn't what, and so I didn't understand that. And so one of my lessons that I've had to learn as I've got older is about truly understanding feminism in a way, because in my family, you know, there was no difference. There was like, you know, but then you go out in the wider world and you go, oh my God, of course, you know. And like stories like yours and, um, you know, my, it's interesting because um, I know this might sound like a very simple, uh, it might be sound too simple, too simplistic. But I think what the world, you know, there are so many problems of, in this world. But I think one major, major thing that would change it massively is if we had more women than men in power heads of companies you know leaders look at jacinda arden in 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 new zealand look at angela merkel you know i really believe that that, that the world has been and i think we all know this now we've woken up but i've felt it for a long time that there's a wisdom that comes with women are far wiser than men you know there was a reason why the Iroquois, do you know the, the North American, the Confederacy of, of North American tribes? There were five of them. The Iroquois was the umbrella uh, of, I think, five or six tribes. And they, the women ran, ran those tribes because they realized that what's the, most, what's the most serious thing that one tribe can do? And that is to go to war with another tribe. And women being if their grandmothers, mothers, sisters are much more likely to seek peace because, you know, and, and, and that's a massive thing. And you look at the Middle East, you look at what's going on. How many women, how many women leaders? There are no women leaders. What if you've got all the mothers of, 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 the, of the children? Or, and, they do, and they do have these inspiring groups. They do have these groups, these women groups from Palestine and Israel who come together and meet. And there's that common experience. And, you know, I know what it's like to have been a man as well. I know that when, when you're 16, 17, through to your 30s, you've got a lot of, you know, men have a lot of that. That's and right. it's, it's a very powerful force, but it can also be a very negative force. And that's why, you know, men men traditionally have done all the fighting and um you know uh except you except you Ed. you are yeah peaceful. i'm a peaceful but i you know i i am because i'm 53 i'm not 19 years old anymore <laughs> <laughs> you were a fighting man when you were 20 years old no no, no i was uh, you know i i haven't i i didn't I didn't fight, but I had my moments. Yeah, you know, because you've got, you know, if you want all, the, all that testosterone, it's like, um, and men don't, we're also, we, we don't have, our society doesn't have good role models for men. Because it was, you know, the role model for man growing up in my era was, you got to be like, you got to be a fucking man, right? 
And I, I just, I just, I just never resonated with that. That was to me that felt like bullshit. I was just like, you know, and I actually had more fun with talking with the girls and chatting with the girls than I did with the guys. I always, you know. Anyway, that was, um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> You are a good man. You are a good father, I think. Well, <laughs> Your father is really lovely, and I congratulations, really. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for your lovely words. And I just, you know, you've been such a, you always, there's so much love and warmth in what you write. And, you know, I, I've always, I've always noticed you on the, on the board. And it was like, you always say something lovely and encouraging. And, and, and you were very lovely after, because on Sunday, after I made that post, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. You know, people misconstrued, and I understand that, and it's a very emotional time. And I understood why, and I did think when I did it, I thought, should I be doing this? But I thought, I have to say something, you know. And um, but you, your words, you know, I got lovely, lovely words. Your your words were very supportive. So thank you, Marianne. I would like to say just one last thing. Yeah. Um, thanks to you, uh, Ed, I've met many, many extraordinary people. You, you're right when you, you, you say you are, we are a family, that's yeah. right. So I would like to say hello to all the people that follow me, uh, especially, I uh, try not to forget them, Radio N 1995, Abbey Boulevard, Planet Telex, uh, Graciela from Argentina, hi, yeah. Valentina in Argentina, Sandra, Sandra Telo Suarez, yeah. my friend, and uh, a friend of mine uh, that, that lives at 60 kilometers from my home, Isabelle, said Isabelle. Voilà. And Anna, I think Anna follow me since today. So hi, Anna. She's from Birmingham and she loves you. All. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. I'd like to say thank you to all of them. And then again, thank you to all of you. Um, for listening and you know I mean it's not like we're listening I don't feel if I feel like it's a, it is a community right it's a this is this is I wouldn't be doing this if I thought it was like a radio show or a kind of a podcast this is this is more than that this is us all checking in right really nice people and I can tell you that there is a band really inspired by you. They are in London. Their name are Temporal Comet. If you can listen to what they do, they do. They are really nice. They are two boys, a French and an English. So. Oh really? I, okay. To listen to them, I will write you the name. But they will be so happy that oh. I, <laughs> I, I evoke them to to you to to make you listen to their music because they are inspired by Radiohead. Really. They love okay. you a lot. Will you, will you DM me and and just I put that put that name down and I will I listen to them. I will do. I will All right. Do. All right, Marianne. Thank you so much. Big Thank love. you too. Thank you so Big much. Big love Be to everybody. Yeah, you too. Take care of yourself. Did yeah. you do your injection? Yeah, I had the first one. The, just the first one. Okay, yeah. you too. You too. Yeah. That's yeah. And the second one in in June, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Have a beautiful evening. You. Thank you. Thanks, Mariam. Thanks, everybody. Big love. Big bye love. bye. All right. See you guys. See you. Bye. Bye.